Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize on your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for an ad space so that you can always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today and become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. And be sure to add Talking Sports with Manny in the How Did You Hear About Podgo section of the application. Thank you so much. What's good, everybody? This is your boy, Manny, and you're listening to another episode of Talking Sports with Manny. Um, I'm a little bit under the weather, but I needed to get on here and give you guys some gems and some nuggets that's going to help you guys win your fantasy league, at least help you guys win this next up-and-coming week. So week one was wild. Lots of... um, Overreactions do not overreact, even in uh, even in uh, the waiver wire. But you still got to make moves because you can't just say, "Oh, I'm not going to overreact," or you try to save that waiver wire pick to get something maybe next week or the week after. Look, if you see something good out there, you got to grab it because in this weird season with COVID, you got to have depth, man. You got to have depth, 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 and then some more depth. One of my leagues, I have like seven or eight running backs. I'm not playing when it comes to running backs this year because those guys are just so fragile, they get hurt. So there's tons of injuries that have happened already. But uh, we're going to break down the first position group, which is the wide receiver group. Um, I was so big on Gardner Minshew this year that I was willing to, you know, draft him at the end of drafts as as my second quarterback. And he's paid dividends, man. He had a great game versus the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I do expect Jacksonville to be losing a lot of games. They just happened to be winning, and he was still able to put up decent numbers. I, I believe he put up over 20 points. So Gardner Minshew is one guy to go grab. Another guy that you might want to go grab is Ryan Tannenhill. Ryan Tannenhill had 22 points. Uh, he's solid. He's, I mean, he doesn't make mistakes, and he finds his tight end. So he's a guy that can also scramble. So don't be surprised if Ryan Tannenhill is a weekly 20-point guy. The next guy on my list is uh, Mitchell Trubisky. I know Trubisky is terrible and this and that, but Mitchell Trubisky had a great game this past week. He had 29 points. And you guys, don't forget this. Mitchell Trubisky is a great scrambler. You know, he's going to get you a rushing touchdown every now and again. So if you're like in a deep league and or in a two quarterback league, Mitchell Trubisky is not a bad guy to have on your bench. Especially if you have like six bench spots or seven bench spots, you definitely want to have another quarterback in a two quarterback league or in a deep league, you know, 14 man, 16 man. So Mr. Trubisky, the next guy on my list is Kirk Cousins. Um, obviously, everybody was thinking that they were going to be a passing team this year, but obviously the defense is so bad that they have to pass. So we'll see if if that trend continues or if it's just a one week thing where people are not familiar with their teams yet. But, yeah, Kirk Cousins is definitely a guy that can that can sling it. And you don't have to worry about his weapons, man. He's a guy that always has and finds weapons. So uh, Kirk Cousins is, is a guy to go grab. Another guy on my list is Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo is a capable fantasy guy. If you look at his numbers last year, over 4,000 yards and I think close to 30 touchdowns. So Jimmy Garoppolo, even though that they are in a Russian offense, he's going to throw lots of screens and dump offs to guys like uh, Mozart, who's now catching passes, and McKinnon. So you guys, go grab uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. He has two good tight ends that can receive the ball. And if there's a script to where they have to pass to come back, it might just bode well for you. Next guy on my list is Teddy Bridgewater. I'm not going to lie. I was skeptical about Teddy Bridgewater this season, but the guy has performed, man. The guy is playing very, very well. And um, that touchdown pass that he, that he hit to a Roby Anderson, I was shocked. I didn't even know that Teddy Bridgewater can do something like that. So he's going to be a decent streaming guy. He's going to be a decent number two quarterback if you're in a two quarterback league. So Teddy Bridgewater is an option. Now, running backs, the most important uh, uh, group in fantasy. You know, you want to have your top 
your your uh, top end handcuffs, but then you also want to look at running backs who always get hurt. You want to go ahead and target those guys as well. So right before the game on Monday, I picked up uh, Benny Snell right before the game, and guess what? James Conner got hurt. So James Conner is uh, out here. I mean uh, James uh, James Conner. His um, his X rays came back positive, so we don't know how long he's going to be out. But then. Even at that, I still don't trust Connor, man. And all this guy did, Benny Snell was, he came in, he rushed the ball 19 times for 113 yards. Had he got a score, he would have had over 20 points. So 11 fantasy points is not bad. And then if Connor doesn't play, they're going to use Benny Snell in a few passing plays to where he has a, a shot to receive the ball. So Benny Snell looked very, very good. Uh, Naheem Hines is another guy. I understand that Jonathan Taylor is out there, but Naeem Hines is going to be a guy that's going to be a PPR monster. We all already knew that he was a great pass catcher out the backfield, but now you're playing with Phillip Rivers, a guy who likes to throw 30% of his passes to uh, running backs. Well, it just bodes well. Look what he, look, look at what he did with Eckler. Look at what he did with Melvin Gordon. Now Naeem Hines. So Naeem Hines had a lot of targets. I think he was like second uh, in targets for running backs. So he's a guy that you want to grab, especially in PPR. Don't worry about Jonathan Taylor. There's enough uh, footballs to go around between Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines. Also, Malcolm Brown. Malcolm Brown, man. Welcome to the NFL. <laughs> Malcolm Brown, he's part of that three-headed monster. Uh, not monster, but, you know, that three-headed uh, uh, running back by committee that the Rams have. So he played very well. I'm not going to lie. He shocked the mess out of me. He had 52 yards rushing, and uh, he had, uh, I believe, two touchdowns. Uh, or maybe he received a touchdown. But I know he ended up with two touchdowns, um, and, um, you know, he looked very, very good. He looked very, very good. So he's definitely a guy that you want to grab. I, uh, I'm sorry. He got over 52 yards. I think it was about close to 80 yards and two touchdowns. But, yeah, Malcolm Brown, he seems to be the favorite in that offense. And the offense flipped the script and actually became a running offense. So, that just bolded well for Malcolm Brown that week. I think that Malcolm Brown is the guy, at least for the first six weeks to seven weeks of the season before Cam Akers can take that job, if he can. Next guy on my list is Joshua Kelly. Joshua Kelly is obviously the number two running back on that team. He's going to be the guy getting all the goal line carries. So there's upside there. And then as the season goes on, we'll see if he'll be able to uh, get into some of the passing game or some of the third down uh, role. Um, the Chargers played a very weird game. They used Austin Eckler more so as a uh, actual running back. He was not receiving any passes. So we'll see who those uh, passes go to if they decide to pass to the running backs. That's the difference between Tyrod Taylor. He, yes, he's a check down guy, but besides LaShawn McCoy, he's never really had a guy that, he, that he's ever checked down to. So keep that in mind. Jarek McKinnon is going to be a great play uh, this week. Versus the Jets. Uh, yes, the 49ers have a lot of running backs and they do a lot of funny stuff with their running backs. But I will say, keep Jerk, uh, go for Jerk Kinnon. He's going to be a PPR monster, especially uh, with Brandon Ayuk being out and George Kittle is hurt. So expect a lot of Jerk McKinnon. He's another guy I was able to scoop before the game. Uh, Daryl Williams is an option. It seems like he's going to be getting a lot of the uh, passing plays for the char uh, for the Chiefs. And if Clyde Edwards Lair ever goes down, or starts playing bad, which I doubt would happen, then there's major upside. Adrian Peterson is a guy that you go grab. Uh, all he does is produce. He had 93 yards rushing and 21 yards receiving, three receptions, 14 points. That's very, very solid. Frank Gore. Frank Gore is now back in fantasy relevant again. Uh, with no Le'Veon Bell, Frank Gore is the guy you want to go grab. Miles Gaskins is out there because we don't know what's going on in in uh, Miami land, so you never know. You never know. He might end up being a running back and not Jordan Howard or um, Breida. So Peyton Barber seems to have a role with the Washington football team. It seems to be the he seems to be the back that everybody trusts. He's going to be that guy that's going to be getting touchdowns left and right. So you might want to go grab Peyton Barber right now because of the touchdown upside. Corey Clement because of the injury to Miles Sanders. We don't know when he's coming back. And then you want to go grab Carlos Hyde because. Carson has that injury history and that fumbling history. So it's just good to have a guy like Hyde. Rex Burkhead is out there just in case. So those are my running backs that I'm looking at, the running backs that I'm interested in, the running backs that are most intriguing to me. Hey, guy, this is your boy, Manny. 
ever wanted to make a podcast, but you never really knew how, Anchor is the key. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast to places such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Also, you can make money from your podcast right away. You don't need no minimum listenership to start making money. Everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. So go ahead and get started today. Download the Anchor app at the App Store or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, guys, the next position group that I want to get into is the wide receiver group. The wide receiver group, there's always so many wide receivers. There's a lot of them that, that just come out of nowhere every single year. So you don't have to go draft, you know, top-tier wide receivers. Yes, it's nice to have the Devontae Parkers and the DeAndre Hopkins kind of guys. But if you miss out on those guys, you can always find these guys on the waiver wire. Last year it was Terry McLaurin. Last year it was uh, DJ Chark and, and Slayton and Debo and a lot of these rookies. But this year, so far, you got a guy like Anthony Miller. He's going to eat because with all the attention that's coming on Allen Robinson, speaking of Allen Robinson, there's a potential that he gets traded. So for those of you guys who drafted Allen Robinson, you just better pray and hope that he goes to the right situation. Or, I mean, they can work for you or or work against you. And if uh, Allen Robinson leaves, that now means that Anthony Miller is the number one receiver. So keep that in mind. If he's out there, go and grab him. Um, LaVisca Shunak is another guy. Lots of upside, lots of potential. Um, he can do it all. He's really a running back in a wide receiver's body. So right now that it's just week one, go get him because after he blows up week two, he might not be out there again. Um, then a guy like Paris Campbell, he has shown to be uh, one of Phillip Rivers' favorite uh, targets. So most definitely Paris Campbell. He's out there, and he's healthy this year. Uh, Alan Lazard a guy that you might want to go grab now before he blows up. I mean, Green Bay has turned into a passing team again. I don't know if it was just because of the Minnesota Vikings, but, I mean, Alan, Alan Lazard has a lot of talent, and for them not to draft a wide receiver, that means that they believe in Alan Lazard. Russell Gage. Russell Gage is the guy who came in last year and made a splash and played well when Julio or Ridley were not available to play. This particular game, this dude got mad targets. He was able to get 12 targets on a team that has Julio and Calvin Ridley. All three Falcons receivers all had over 100 yards receiving. So Russell Gage can be a nice little number three wide receiver that has some number two upside certain weeks. So you want to kind of grab him and kind of see what happens. And if Julio or Ridley, if Julio or Ridley ever goes down, then, man, you got yourself a gem. Uh, Russell Gage is definitely in play for deep leagues. Perfect guy for our deep leagues. Then you have Roby Anderson. Roby Anderson, man, I was skeptical, just like Bridgewater, but he was able to produce. You know, he had over 100 yards uh, receiving. He had a touchdown. He had six catches. Uh, he had over, like, close to 20 points. So that's definitely something that you want to uh, uh, have. He's definitely a guy you want to have uh, going forward because, I mean, if he has weeks like this, now I know his – Roby Anderson's thing has always been inconsistent. But who knows if he's consistent? I mean, he outplayed DJ Moore. Why not give it a try and and see if this is somewhat going to be consistent through the season? Because if it is, then you got yourself a gem. I'm not saying he's going to be the number one receiver, but to me, I'm just not a DJ Moore fan. So why not give Roby Anderson a chance and see what happens? Mike Williams. This is a guy that I'm liking what he's doing with Tyrod Taylor. He's looking really, really good. I mean, he's making some nice, crazy catches. And he had nine targets last game. I'm pretty sure that as, as the season goes on, they're going to connect even more. So, guys, go grab Mike Williams if he's available in free agency. Uh, Mar, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scatlin. Uh, this is a guy that he's so inconsistent up and down. But when he's on, he's on. He had four catches for 91 yards and a touchdown, 19 points. 19 points is not bad. So that's another guy you want to keep an eye on. Between him and uh, Lazard, one of them is really going to, lock up that number two wide receiver spot and really, really, really get a lot of targets moving forward. Nikhil Harry, is he's like a bino candidate. You might want to get him now if he's out there and just kind of wait on it. You know, if you have space on your bench, just stash him and see how that unfolds. 
Corey Davis shocked the mess out of me, man. He looked very, very good. He had 101 yards, uh, had seven catches for 17 points. That's not bad. I mean, A.J. Brown is getting covered double team, so it's really opening up a lot of things for Corey Davis. Then you have Scotty Miller. You guys know that Tom Brady loves his slot guys, so he was able to get five catches for 73 yards. He's a guy to keep an eye out on because as the season progresses, I'm pretty sure that Mike Williams – I mean, Mike Evans and Kenny Gall- – I mean, not Kenny Galladay, but Chris Godwin are going to be double. So, Scotty Miller, he, he, hey, he might be able to eat. So, if you're in a deep league again, like I said, go grab him. Perfect for deep leagues. Danny Amendola, with all the injury issues that they have going on out there, um, he's definitely a guy uh, to go grab. Now, I'm going to give you guys one more. Quintez Cephas. I've been on this guy tough. I got this guy in Dynasty. Like, this is like my secret weapon, man. My secret weapon, because next year when if Galladay leaves and if Marvin Jones leaves and if Amendola leaves, I mean, who else is on the roster but Quintez Cephas? The guy can play, and uh, Akuda has always said that, you know, he was a tough guy to guard in college, so go grab him. Let's hop into the tight ends. Dallas Godard is the tight end one right now as it stands in fantasy. Not Zach Ertz, not Gronkowski. Not uh, Ertz, I mean, uh, Kelsey and some of these uh, uh, top tier, not even Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is second by two points. But Dallas Godard is going to eat in this offense until the Eagles have experienced wide receivers or healthy wide receivers. So until then, Dallas Godard is going to be playing behind Ertz, but he's going to be getting a lot of targets. He's literally playing that slot wide receiver role, but as a tight end. So you want to go ahead and grab him. Uh, for me, in my deeper leagues, and my fantasy leagues, and keeper leagues, I draft the Dallas Godard as my number two tight end every single time, and it is going to pay dividends for me when I'm starting him next week all across the board, and uh, let's see if he can keep this going. Also, on the list as a tight end, uh, Logan Thomas. Now, I know he plays for the Washington football team, and a lot of people are not are down on the Washington football team. But Logan Thomas, hey, he got a lot of targets, man. He got eight targets. He was, like, top three in targets for tight ends this week. So Dwayne Haskins loves him. He's a safety valve, and he's going to be touchdown dependent a lot. But at the same time, you know, he's definitely a guy that can uh, do some damage as the season goes on. So why not buy low right now? Chris Herndon is out there, uh, Jimmy Graham, uh, Greg Olson. Greg Olson I like because – Russell Wilson loves his tight end. So you can expect Greg Olson to mess around and get seven seven or eight touchdowns. He's way better than Disley to me, even at this age. So he's definitely a guy that can benefit off of Kirk Cousins. O.J. Howard. I'm not a big fan of O.J. Howard, but guess what? When you got another uh, uh, quarterback who loves his tight ends, you know, and, like, if you're in a deep league, who knows? Maybe O.J. Howard gets more, gets more shine than Gronkowski. Who knows? Brady loves his tight ends. You can see two or three tight end sets. He loves them. So why not give a flyer on O.J. Howard and see how it unfolds the next two to three weeks? If he sucks again, you drop him. Hey, we suck again. You know, drop him. Uh, Jordan Aikens, he's a guy. Him and Darren Fells for the Houston Texans. One of those two guys is going to blow up. I just don't know who it's going to be. So those are guys you want to grab from the tight end position. Now let's hit up the defense uh, position. Uh, it's a very, very, very important position in fantasy football. This can win you your league many, 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 many times again. The Titans. The Titans didn't play well this past Monday night, but guess what, man? There's, there's, there's still a chance, and there's still hope. So I would say grab the Titans right now that they're still low. Um, the Packers have a potential to be decent versus the, uh, versus the Lions, especially if Kenny Galladay misses another game. Uh, the Cardinals versus Washington. Uh, I know I'm a Washington fan, but, you know, if the offense does not pick up, the Cardinals will be a good streaming uh, defense. Now, it's just all up to Washington. Washington does have a great defense. If Washington runs the ball, then it can be a low-scoring game. So in a, in a, in a league where there's like, you know, seven – Zero zero to seven points or seven to 13 points, you get a certain amount of points. Um, this game versus Arizona is going to be good. Uh, Arizona is a very good team. So we'll see if they can apply pressure to Dwayne Haskins and exploit 
the Washington football offensive line. Uh, Chandler Jones scares me. Me being a Washington fan, it scares me, but the Arizona Cardinals are not a bad option um, as a streamer. I'm not one of those kinds of people who say, don't stream nothing against my team. No, if it's a good matchup, I'll even play people against my team. I don't care. It's fantasy football. There's a difference between fantasy football and real-life football. Okay? I could be cheering for the Cardinals defense to do well, but cheering for the Washington football team to win the game. So I don't care. But, yeah, the Cardinals are a good play uh, this week. Then for the kickers, you got Chris Boswell for the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers versus Denver. You have Mason Crosby, who right now is in a high-powered, high-geared offense. And then you got Ryan Sockup, who's playing with Tom Brady. Tom Brady's going to put up points, and when he does not put up points, he's going to be there to kick a lot of field goals. So those are my waiver wire targets. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please share this thing with somebody else. I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry because of the way that I sound, but I just want to kind of get this thing to you guys because I believe that these picks can possibly help you win your week and possibly, hopefully, help you win your league. So thanks again for listening. Please share it. And I love y'all. Y'all be safe.